أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونشكر ونستعين ونستغفر ونتوب إليه ونشهد إن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد محمد عبده ورسوله رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم Throughout this past year we've heard many hashtags Hashtag Me Too, hashtag MWD, hashtag Can You Hear Us Now. With each of these campaigns that took to social media, we've seen a sense of a group of people who have long felt themselves vulnerable who have long felt voiceless, who have long felt silenced and oppressed by a society that suppresses. And in embarking on these different campaigns, the sense of silence was broken. As young women began to open up and speak about things that were once unspeakable, to speak about abuse, sexual harassment, situations of sexual assault, to speak about difficulties and problems, but to also speak about strength, to speak about unity, to speak about sisterhood. We began to see some of those chains that have held many women back for many years broken. When we use the word feminism in our communities, we often feel like we're spitting out a dirty word. But what is feminism? When we look at the denotative definition, the dictionary definition of feminism, we see that it is the fight for equality, the fight for justice, the stand against oppression, Yet when we look at the connotative definition, the definition that so many people have attributed to the word, it becomes one of misandry, of hatred towards men, of feeling like an unequal essence has developed. But when we go back to the spirit of a fight for equality, a fight for justice, a stand against oppression, then we know that each and every single one of us in this room is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stand tall in that fight. To be with the oppressed and to stand against the oppressor. Just a few short days ago, many of us may have seen online and in different campaigns a celebration of Muslim Women's Day. And many times the question arises, why do we need to celebrate Muslim Women's Day? Or for that matter, why March 8th, International Women's Day? Or for that matter, why an entire month dedicated to women? The answer to that question lies in what we see. Every 15 seconds, a girl or woman somewhere in the world is assaulted abused, or raped. More than one-third of all women worldwide will experience physical or sexual violence in her lifetime. Because women perform 66% of the world's work and produce 50% of its food, but earn only 10% of its income and own less than 1% of its property. Because every year, 60 million girls are assaulted on their way to school. Because in some parts of the world, a girl is more likely to be raped than to go to school. This is not our Islam. This is not what we as Muslims stand for. And until we fix this, until we stand against the oppression, the assault, the abuse, the injustice 
towards women, then we have to set aside not just a day, but every day of every year to make this change happen. When we can replace this reality with the reality of raising our daughters as leaders who will be judged on the trails they blaze rather than the blazers they wear, where they can confidently say smart is stronger than cute, when they see the beauty that exists inside themselves and refuse to succumb to a definition that stimmies their strength, then we can do away with celebrating women just one day out of the year, because we'll know that we've built a world of justice, a world where equality isn't about women striving to be men, but about women recognizing that their value is not judged by any lesser or shallower set of standards. This is what we must strive for. Currently, we raise our daughters to be like sons. We raise our daughters and tell them, be strong like a boy, run fast like a boy, be educated and get a good career like a guy. Why? That is not what the fight for justice looks like. That is not what it means to step away from oppression. There was a woman named Gloria Steinem who once said, women today have become the men they want to marry. This is not feminism in the sense that we as Muslims understand it. This is not the fight for equality. My dear sisters, the ones who are mothers, those who are daughters, wives, sisters, friends, those who are educators, who are businesswomen, who work as doctors, as nurses, as engineers, who give back to their communities, who raise their families, who struggle through all sorts of struggles. I ask you this today, who defines you? Who defines you? When we think of empowerment, we often equate empowerment to a societal ideal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no might nor power except by Allah. Where do we find empowerment? When we look at Surah Al Hadid, verse 20, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that this dunya, this world, is but li'abun wa lahwan wa zinatun. This world is but play and amusement and adornment. As we raise our daughters in this society today, how do they play? when they are younger? Are they entertained by Disney princesses who may guide them and teach them? First, like Cinderella, that you need a prince on a white horse to come save you, or like Sleeping Beauty, that only a man's kiss can awaken you, or like today's princess figures, like Merida in Brave, who believes no man is someone worthy enough to share her life? Is this the la'ab stage that our children are exposed to? Is this what our daughters see at a young age? And in the age of amusement, when they enter that stage, what is amusing our children? Is it MTV and music videos? Is it books and songs that denigrate women? that glorify a culture that says the less you wear, the more you are? Where do they find their amusement? And as they enter into the age of adornment, who do they look to? Do they adorn themselves like Beyonce and Katy Perry and Rihanna? Do they dress like the pop stars that they followed during that age of amusement? Do they dress like the Disney princesses and act like them that they followed during the age of la'ab? Where does their empowerment come from? Who defines them? 
Who are the role models that we give our children? Interestingly enough, years ago, that same question of definition came about in a book that was written by a woman named Betty Friedan called The Feminine Mystique. The book came out in the 1950s, and it was hailed as a groundbreaking work. And it was hailed as a groundbreaking work because there was a central question within that book. And that question was, who defines you as a woman? How do you define your role? Can you work outside the home and also raise a family? Can you do both? Who defines you? Now, if we fast forward to more present day, we see in 2013, there was another book that was released, and it was called Lean In, by a woman named Sheryl Sandberg, the COO of Facebook. And in this book, she asked the central question, and that question was, who defines you? Can a woman succeed in her career in the workplace in 2013? and also succeed in her home? Can a woman be beneficial to society in the outside world, but also be beneficial to her family and to her children within the home? Why do these questions keep coming up? For us, as Muslim women, as Muslim men, we have our answer. We know who defines us. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us when he says, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that whether we are a Muslim man or a Muslim woman, a believing man or a believing woman, a righteous man or a righteous woman, we will be judged on the merit of our deeds not on our gender. Who defines us? Our definition is given to us. It is given to us in the role models of our Islamic history. Where is the next Nusayba? Where is the next Ashifa bint Abdullah? Where is the next Sumayya? In this room, right here, Because our Muslim sisters, our Muslim daughters, the Muslim wives, the Muslim mothers, the Muslim women of today carry the legacy of Khadija, carry the legacy of Aisha, carry the legacy of Fatima radiallahu anha. And this is a legacy that will not dim if we return to our roots and stop allowing society to define us. There will come a day where we will be able to look at our daughters, look them straight in the eye and tell them that they matter, not just to us, but to the whole world. And they will see it and they will believe it because they will not feel that entering the masjid that has a beautiful marble staircase and heavy glass doors at the men's entrance is exclusionary and does not include them. And instead, they have to trek down the road, around the corner, through an alley to get to the back women's entrance. This is not our Islam. Our deen teaches us justice. Our deen teaches us equality. Our deen teaches us to stand in the face of oppression. And so it is incumbent upon each and every one of us to be able to stand to the oppressions, the injustices, and that which we see occurring around the world. So that one day, we can say that the reality that we live in is a reality that pleases Allah. And we can tell our daughters that what they are made up of is more important than any sort of makeup. And we can tell our daughters 
that they have to stand proud, that they have to shout who defines them. Because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator who has created each and every one of our girls to be perfect as they are. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.